Hello users, and welcome to another episode of whatever this is. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of graphic material in this video. If that's not something you think you can handle, do not watch this video or listen to this video maybe instead. Um, but I've got three clips here that I want to show in regards to the Kenosha shooting. Uh, that took place. And there's some more details that uh, I've read and I'm not going to show those in the video because I don't know what the guidelines are as far as this goes. The shooter appears to be under the age of 18 and I don't want this video to be removed um, because I do know that there are different guidelines for discussing people under the age of 18 that are minors. So. Um, it appears that the shooter came from out of state, which is certainly interesting because Trump and the Republican Party and the Blue Lives Matter loyalists have been telling patriots for a while now that it's the outside agitators that are the ones doing this. It's the, it's the, the violent white anarchists that are coming from out of state and they're bussing in Antifa members, whatever that means. And it always turns out that the people that are actually assaulting the Patriots are people that are out of state, some loyalists that are working in gun clubs and have been born and raised into a white supremacist militia. And so I have a clip here. I am not specifically sure of the order of these clips, um, but I believe that this one comes first. Now, another thing is Twitter clips are not loading for me. I have uh, a bunch of Twitter clips, but they just don't load. And I find that to be very interesting. I think Twitter is censoring this, to be honest with you. But you can use a Twitter video downloader um, in order to get access to the video if a video does not load. Just Google Twitter video downloader. Um, I'm a little sneezy, so I'm, I'm leaking a little bit. Don't mind me. But uh, in these videos, it shows police officers uh, coordinating with the domestic terrorist loyalist um, and uh, hydrating them, giving them water and supplies, and then uh, escorting them away from the scene. Now, the police, as of this moment, I believe, are saying that they're still looking for the shooter when, obviously, they let him go and they were on his team to begin with. So I'm going to play this video first. Now the we're all guy, back by the gas station again. The guy on the left here is the shooter to my understanding. And this is the little loyalist militia that they're they're working with. Hey Joe! Alright, come on guys, let's get out of here. So again, they're supplying a far-right loyalist militia here and coordinating with that militia. And one thing you have to understand is this militia, these loyalists, have come from out of state and are protecting random people's property. Random people that probably aren't there, that probably don't know them, they are there to protect random buildings. And in that protection of random buildings, multiple people have lost their lives. And real quick, before I get to the next videos, um, the thing is, a building can be replaced. A, bi a, a car can be replaced. Dollar bills can be replaced. A human life cannot be replaced. You don't just respawn like it's Call of Duty. All right. So when you go out there and you say, I am going to kill multiple people in the name of property that I don't own and that is in a completely random town, 30 fucking minutes away from my house across state lines. It's just what? It's an excuse to kill. So I've got another video here. 
Um, I want the volume here to be raised. I don't quite have video of the initial shooting. I could not find anything that's any clear. But this is the guy who I just mentioned saying on the phone that he had just killed somebody. I'm going to increase the volume here so you can hear it. Uh, it's really low, obviously, but just listen. I'm going to do it one more time with slightly louder volume. My apologies if it breaks your eardrums. So as you can see, he's on the phone admitting that he had just killed somebody. And in his attempt to escape... Now, again, a lot of right-wingers, and I, I call them right-wingers, but they really, they're reality. They are loyalist psychopaths. They see this clip and they say, Someone's defending their laugh. Yeehaw! Yeah, okay, let me ask you this question. You're a loyalist, right? If someone shoots and kills your friend, would you, I don't know, sit there and do nothing? Or maybe chase that guy down and get revenge? Or at least apprehend them? This is There is no self-defense when someone goes on a shooting spree in a state that they do not live in, in a town that they do not live in, working with the police. That is, there is no self-defense there. But again, you see right-wing psychopaths, loyalist losers, who are circulating this video saying, oh, they were defending themselves? Oh, defense. I'm defending my right to life. Yet, again, this person is from out of state. They're apparently under the age of 18. And they are working with the police and other far-right loyalist militias to attack patriots that are trying to have a say in changing the system of governance in this country. So watch this. Again, this is the worst clip. Hey, so as you can tell, the now I just want to say chasing someone with an assault rifle probably not the best idea. But at the same time, again, this is why leftists need to arm themselves. Because if leftists had assault rifles, this would be a much simpler thing. This would have been a lot easier. There would have been less people dying. And things would have gone a lot better. So I am fully in favor of leftists arming themselves. Chasing someone unarmed, right, with an assault rifle, that's not very intelligent. Um, but at the same time, again, this guy ran in, this guy has driven several miles across state lines to orchestrate with a loyalist militia to defend random people's property that they don't know and shoot down patriots who are just trying to protest. So again, there is no self-defense here. This is not, as this is no self-defense scenario for this guy. He is an armed mass shooter terrorist and i hope best case scenario for him that he spends the rest of his life in prison worst case scenario for him people that aren't the police find him sooner that's why it's weird that the police let him go because the police if they really cared about his safety they would have brought him in because they're on the same team and if other people find him first that's not going to be good So as you can sh see here, the interesting thing is he's shooting at people not as they're coming to attack him, right? But as they're running away in response to his gunfire. So look at this. This person is literally trying to run away and then he shoots them. And again, right-wingers will say, self-defense, self-defense! Yet this guy... Again, if someone came to your town from out of state and started shooting your friends and family, would you say, oh, okay, let's just let them go? No, chances are you would defend yourself and your family. Again, this is the thing with these outside agitators. They're always white, they're always violent, and they're always loyalists. They're always blue lives matter losers. Now watch this part. This is where it gets exceptionally absurd.
This guy is just walking, and then there's cops over there that have witnessed what has happened. There are no other people with guns in the area, and watch what they do in response. Also, look at this guy jogging like he's in a fucking video game. Like, Jesus Christ, it's so embarrassing. So he goes in there thinking the cops are going to arrest him. Everyone is saying, as you can hear, everyone is saying, this dude just shot people. And what are the cops going to do? Check this out. Look at the cop's response. Instead of, I don't know, apprehending a mass shooter, they ask him for details and then drive right past him. He literally went in there thinking he would be arrested and wasn't because the cops don't care about solving crimes. They don't care about apprehending criminals. All they care about is suppressing an uprising of civilians that have had enough with the occupying Nazi force in this country. So again, before anyone just screams and whines in the comments, you're foolish. You are foolish, okay? There is no reason for this person to be there. They don't live in Kenosha. They don't need to be there. Yet they are, and yet they killed people that lived there. They came there from out of state, out of town, to kill people that live there. Now, the same people that go, states rights, states rights, when it comes to owning slaves or when it comes to enforcing coronavirus restrictions law, restriction laws or anything, those same people who are saying, Antifa's busting in people from George Soros, those same people are not going to say a damn thing about a right-wing loyalist terrorist attacking a bunch of patriots that are trying to protest their government in what a government that claims to have a First Amendment of freedom of speech, a government that claims to have a Fifth Amendment that includes due process, that doesn't matter to these loyalists. They claim to love law and order while violating laws and violating orders on a daily basis because to them it's a game. They will weaponize your empathy. They will weaponize your humanity. They will weaponize your morality and then shove that into your face with a bullet because in reality, they do not care about any of the things that they espouse because they are not real people. They are machines, weapons of a fascist state. And they chose that path. If you're making less than half a million dollars a year, and if you live in anything short of a McMansion, and you're defending the government, you're not a patriot. You're a loyalist. And you know what we did with loyalists in the 1770s? I don't know. How about you read a book? Thank you for watching. If, uh, if you want me to make a follow-up, send me any details. Thank you. Goodbye.